everyone. We hope you're having a cracking start to your week. It's another match preview in the championship. I've got Cherry's Rail Army's very own Matt Davis. How you doing? How's your week going, Matt? Yeah, very well. Thanks, Kirk. Very well indeed. Yeah, not bad at all. Looking forward to this. OK, so with the fixtures ramping up and we're going to get into a busy spell at the end of this championship season, sometimes it's a bit difficult for us to get time to cramp in these match previews. So we are having to record this on Friday before the weekend fixtures. So do take that into consideration. But we'll do our best, Matt, won't we, to try and give everything we need to the fans prior to kickoff. Absolutely. We certainly will. But beforehand, you need to subscribe to Cherry's Red Army if you haven't already. For those who have subscribed, thank you very much. We've gone past 830, well on our way to 850. And a big shout out to uh, lots of donations that we've had recently towards the channel. So thank you very much for that. Really appreciate it. In the description, you can support the channel, buymeacoffee.com slash Cherry's Red Army. So we don't know yet, Matt, what that Preston score is. However, Let's go back to the first game between the teams, Peterborough versus Bournemouth. It was a midweek game as well and a tough game to watch for the fans in the stadium. I think we did a watch along. It was a tough watch and a disappointing nil-nil draw back in September. Yeah, it was. It was one of those games where uh, we were obviously on a good run of form, I think, at the time, midweek. And we Peterborough were, were very poor. I think they'd started. They were up and down. I think at, at home they'd been... Uh, not too bad away from home, fairly poor. I think we did that. Me and you did the preview for that one as well, mm. Kirk, didn't we? And we felt that we could go there and stamp our authority on the game and, and come away quite comfortably with the points. But it didn't turn out like that. I mean, credit to Peterborough on the evening. They managed to um, stop us playing a little bit and, and maybe limited our chances. Arguably, I think from what I can remember, we had, because I did watch the game on, I think it was on Sky Red Button, we had enough opportunities to have won it. Probably should have won it. We did miss a few chances. Um, and if I remember rightly, I think Parker, Scott Parker mixed the team up a little bit that night. I think he brought Morgan Rogers in. Um, one or two others came in and didn't really stake their claim. Um, it was a disappointing performance. We didn't really function in the way that we had been functioning at that at that particular time. Uh, and Peterborough, I think they, they played five across the back, uh, packed the midfield out with just uh, with just one up, left one up top to try and hit us on the break and uh, managed to get themselves a, a point in what was a pretty drab nil-nil draw, wasn't it? And someone you mentioned who got a rare start in that game was Morgan Rogers. And the news today, we heard that he's gone back to Manchester City to retrain with the academy. Still, the agreement is in place, but his days at Bournemouth are very much numbered. And do you know what, Matt? I thought the writing was on the wall when he got that goal at Luton, didn't get rewarded with a start at home against Hull City. And I thought that's the end. And, and maybe it was the move was too far too soon and he's, a, he's at a young age where he can regroup maybe drop down the league again next season there's hopefully potential in there you can't be at Manchester City Academy for no reason but it just didn't quite work out and unfortunately it didn't look like there was enough confidence in him and once that transfer deadline day happened I, th I think it was pretty much nailed on he, he wasn't going to play many more games for the Cherries. No, and I mean, he, he, you know, he, I, f I feel for the lad a little bit because Parker used him very sp sp sparingly indeed, didn't he? And I think we've, we've said before, Kirk, haven't we? He used to bring him on in the sort of the last 10 minutes of a game where we're either comfortably winning or or we're chasing and, and, and you're, you're up against a team with a, with a low block that he's got to try and unlock. And you're asking a lot of, the, of, a, of a young lad to step into that situation and make something happen out of nothing. When he got his goal at Luton, he, he came on as sub. And I, I remember saying to myself at the time, the time is now, Morgan. The time really is now. And he delivered. He got the goal. And it seemed to lift everybody, really, none more so than Morgan Rogers himself. But then, like you say, Kurt, the very next game, when I think it was home to Hull, Taylor made for him to start in a front three right. and, and really, really go at that, that whole city defence and back line. And he, he didn't he didn't play him. So the, the, the writing was very much on the wall. And obviously, the business that we did in the January window meant that he was even further down the pecking order. And I think as far as Morgan goes... Uh, for him personally, I think the right move for him now would be to go out probably next season, go back to Man City and regroup, take his breath, take stock for the rest of the season and then uh, arrange himself a, a loan, a, a higher end League One club for next season where he can, uh, may maybe that's his level at the moment, where, where he can again have a real impact, get his confidence up, get back on amongst the goals, amongst the assists. And um, yeah, that's that's probably right for him. But unfortunately, it hasn't worked out for him here, which is a, is a real shame. 
I can see Jefferson trying to get into another match preview. Lerma's here. Yeah, he's, he can't <laughs> stay away, the lads, can he? <laughs> loves he it. loves it. And Lerma yeah. is back very, very soon. This will be his last game of suspension. So it will we be. may yeah. see him against Derby in the game after this one. Right, let's turn attentions to the opposition map, Peterborough. Let's look at this, shall we? Currently in the relegation zone, currently least wins in the league with five. They've had the most losses, 22. Joint lowest goal scorers, 24, conceded 66 goals, minus 42 goal difference. No wins since December the 11th. That was a 2-1 win versus Blackpool. Nine losses in 11, one win away from home all season against Hull City. But before you put Bournemouth to win on your accumulator, if anything's going for Peterborough, their new manager, Grant McCann, the last team he visited, Dean Court, he took all three points with Hull City. Um, it doesn't look good for Peterborough, though. doesn't look good. One point out of the last six, I think. Not scoring goals, if you look at their recent form. Not getting on the score sheet at all. Johnson, Clark, Harris, for whatever reason, not in the team. I think he's gone with uh, Jack Marriott and uh, Callum Morton up top, certainly the last game. Um, Johnson, Clark, Harris, the top scorer, along with Dembele, who's now with us, with five goals. Um, so they're not scoring. They're not leaking too many of late at the other end. So he has at least, or they have at least, addressed those issues. I think they're they're very much setting up with a a, a three four one two sort of formation, and I'm guessing that that's that's turning into a back five. Um, and they're trying to they're trying to stay solid and, and not not to leak too many goals at the other end. But yeah, it's just, it's not happening for them, and it'll be a massive massive achievement if Grant McCann keeps them up from here. Um, it really will. Full kudos to him if he does it. But he, uh, he he obviously uh, he got the result against us, uh, the vitality for Hull City recently, and he was actually turning things around at Hull. He was very, very harshly sacked when the new owners mm. come in, wasn't he? Because he'd been on a good run of form. And I was actually quite impressed with the, the job that he, he was starting to do there. And he's been, a, you know, he took them back. He got, they got relegated. He brought them back up. They struggled early season, but he was he was picking them up again. And he likes to play an expansive uh, way of, 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 of uh, in an inexpensive way in terms of the football that he wants to play. He wants the fullbacks to push on. Uh, he wants to get on the ball. He wants to dominate possession. He wants to build from the back, from the goalkeeper, from the from the back four onwards. So uh, again, it's a similar style, really. Is it? A lot of these managers seem to be adopting that that style of play, similar to what we'll play. Whether he'll go with that three four one two formation again against us, or uh, whether it'll probably be a very much a back five. I think they'll be they'll come for a point. They'll be probably happy with a point. But yeah, it'd be an interesting matchup. But it's certainly a game that we would uh, expect to stamp our authority on uh, with the quality that we've got and, and obviously gain the three points. And good news that we're hearing that certain players are coming back. We know that Smudge, he started in the last home game before that Preston game. And players are back on the turf. I do love some of Parker's um, terminology. Some players are modified. Some are on the grass. Some are a little bit more away. But we're going to go into that predicted 11 map very, very soon, where I think there could be quite a few changes with these fixtures coming thick and fast and three home games in a row. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I think this is where we've been saying it with it. Scott Parker's got to really earn his, earn his money. Uh, and he's got to manage this this big squad of players that he's got. Yes, there's a few injuries, but there's now players coming back, as you as you've rightly said, into the back into the mix. So not only has he got to manage their transition back into the team and give them an adequate amount of minutes, but not overwork them maybe or overplay them. But he's also got to rotate accordingly and rest players maybe where necessary because we play Preston, Peterborough, Derby, Reading in a very very short space of time, and they're all games that are winnable games. And I'd, I'd be expecting a return of a minimum of 10 points from these games. And I know we, we spoke in the week about April's run and Aaron made a fair point, actually, that um, you know it's against a lot of teams that will have to come out against us, teams that will fancy themselves against us, which might suit us. Uh, it won't be teams that are necessarily you know setting up for a draw, pay, playing a low block. Uh, they might be more open and it might allow our quality to shine through. But I just think it's a pivotal point of the season and you've got to be picking up points. We've really got to capitalise on these, these games in hand and, and really stretch that gap as much as as possible. And we've got four games now really ahead of us where we've got a big opportunity to do that. But obviously the, the squad um, has got to be managed accordingly. The players have got to be rotated where, where they need to be and uh, everything's got to be managed correctly by Scott now. OK, we have mixed it up though. We're going to go into it. This is our predicted 11 for this game. Go 
go then for Peterborough at home, Dean Court, Mark Travers in goal, Ethan Laird to start right back, Gary Cahill to come back into the team, Captain Lloyd Kelly. It's not Matt Davis at left back, slightly differently spelt. It's going to be Leif Davis. We've also got Lewis Cook in the holding role. Mark Ondes, he replaces Phil Billing. Todd Cantwell to continue his good performances lately. Then Bele to play in a fixture between the teams again, but in a red and black shirt. Jaden Anthony, hopefully back available. And Dom Solanke gone past that 20 league goal marker. And an opportunity, Matt, for us to get on the front foot and maybe put one team away convincingly. Big opportunity. Big opportunity, Kirk, isn't it? In fact, all of these games, these these three home games, are an opportunity to do that. None more so than this one. Uh, we spoke off air, didn't we? We sort of picked our 11, uh, what it would be. And I think uh, Ethan Laird certainly comes in. Travis is a, a no-brainer, obviously. Ethan Laird comes in because he hasn't. we haven't seen him yet. Um, mm. You know, it, we, we were expecting big things and, and he's not played. So, you know, when is he going to play, basically? This, this game would be perfect for him, I think, to come in. Um, Gary Cahill for me is again. We, we said, didn't we, that uh, I know Nat Phillips is back after being ill, but this would be a, a good opportunity to get Gary Cahill some minutes again because he's going to need that at 36. He's been out a little while, so he needs to keep ticking over. So I think it'd be a good game to slot him in. And and Leif Davis for me has has, has been massively improved from um, it, it, you know early season and his one of his first games at Swansea at home where. He looked, uh, he looked very off the pace and very not with it for the first 20, but he grew into the game. Since then, he's, he, although he's been a little bit inconsistent, I, I felt for him because he's, he's tried and he's come on in leaps and bounds. He's just not been able to form a partnership or a, or a link-up, really, down that left-hand side, would be it Anthony Lowe or whoever's played there. He's been very, very unlucky. But uh, in terms of his individual performance, it's, it's been of a high quality and he is a player that can get forward, likes to get forward and, and whip crosses in. Whereas Jordan Zamora likes to cut inside a lot and run at defenders, it almost uh, get himself one on one against the centre half. Leif Davis is very much get to the byline and get those balls in the box, which I like. He's a, he's a proper sort of old school left back, really. So I'd like to see him given an opportunity in this one. Um, we feel, don't we, Kurt, that he might go with Ben Pearson to, tomorrow uh, for the Preston game. So yeah. um, may, maybe Lewis Cook would be would be very much suited to, to this one, getting on the ball. Distrib- his distribution will be key for this. And I think Lewis would be perfect against a team like Peterborough. And the reason we're, we we decided to take Phil Billing out is because um, he's played a lot of games. He mm. seems to be carrying a knock. I mean, every game he seems to be limping about a little bit. He, do, he seems to be gingerly walking about the pitch. He was doing so against Stoke as well, wasn't he, where... I think he did. He obviously had the, the bad challenge on him and that seemed to affect him a little bit. So maybe just take him out, give him a bit of a rest and get Emmy Marcondas in it, who deserves another shot. For me, he's somebody that, that's got real quality if we can get him on the ball in that, that final third. And he, he can unlock back fours, can't he? He can make things happen um, and, and, and thread those through balls through to the front three and really have an impact in the, the opposing penalty box. Um Dembele against his former side, you'd, you'd, you'd want him to play. He'll he'll very much want to play, so I, I would I would leave Dembele in. Um, and it was a toss up, wasn't it, between Jamal Lowe and and Jaden Anthony? And we went for Anthony purely because Jamal Lowe scored two in two. He scored at Blackpool mm. after he came off the bench. Scored again at the weekend, although he, against Stoke last weekend he wasn't particularly convincing at times. But he got the goal. He's got two and two. Be be very harsh to drop him, but. Anthony's just coming back as well from injury, so it'd be questionable whether he, he's thrust straight back in for the Preston game. But this would be a perfect opportunity, for, again, for Jaden Anthony to get amongst the numbers in terms of goals and assists um, against Peterborough. So, yeah, looking like a, a, a strong 11 for me, Kirk, and one that's more than capable of, of doing the business. And it is locked in for this game. Do you agree? Disagree? Of course. Let us know in the comments. Excellent. That's our predicted 11 for this game. Look, there could be counter arguments to say there's too many changes in there, but there's lots of games to come. And look, we have to back Scott Parker if he does it, because we know if he does do it and we don't get the performance, it's an easy target to say there was too many changes. But I would agree in this game that we should be able to do this. But we're going to go with those score predictions in a minute, Matt. But as I like to do in these match previews, let's just throw a little game stat at it shall we and the last time that we played at home against Peterborough you might recall this because you, you do love a little bit of memory lane 14th of August 2010 was a Bournemouth 5 
Peterborough won. Mark Pugh and Tom Robinson and a hat trick from Brett Pittman. Remember that one? I do remember it. Yeah, I remember it well. I think we, uh, 2010, I think we went to Charlton on the opening day. That that would have been, I might be, I think I'm correct in saying that would have been our first home game after promotion from League Two back up to League One after the Burton away uh, mm. celebration scenes. We got promotion. We went to Charlton and got narrowly beat 1-0. But I came and went to that game and came away thinking, you know, Charlton were a big fish at, at that level. We can compete. We can do well at this level. I think we'll be. I think we'll be fine. We can give it a real go this season. Come home to Peterborough again. I think we're a side that were maybe much fancied in the league at the time, and we smashed them five one. Brett Pittman with a hat trick. I think he was on fire that day. It was unbelievable. When you, you think of the other scorers there, Mark Pugh, we had some real quality in that team, didn't we? For for League One, even though we didn't have much money back then, Eddie Howe was starting to work his magic and. Yeah, I do remember it. Great, great day. I think the sun was shining, August afternoon, 5-1. A repeat would be nice, Kirk, wouldn't it? I mean, the sun, sun won't be shining. It won't be August, but 5-1 would do me. And I just want a number out of you, Matt, because in 33 matches that Peterborough have played this season, how many matches do you think they've not scored in? Out of 33, uh, I would say that they haven't scored in... 19 of them. Wow. You even knew that, or that's just an absolutely amazing guess or <laughs> calculation. Correct. 19 I've done games research. this season. Peterborough haven't scored in. Right. Brilliant. We're going into this game very confident, hopefully. Score prediction then, Matt, for this game, Bournemouth versus Peterborough. I think it could and should be a comfortable victory for us. Um Hopefully, you know, we'll have, we'll have got a good result at Preston to keep that, that winning run and that momentum going. Home to Peterborough. Yes, they've got a new manager. They'll be hoping for a bit of a bounce there. The new manager bounce and they, they need to get results desperately as soon as possible. So that makes me think that they, they, they're gonna, they've they got to come out and maybe, you know, to try and try and get something, try and make something happen. Um, we can therefore show our quality and hopefully, hopefully pick them off. Uh, and it's exploit any gaps that there are uh, at home. We might have to be patient because they, they, you know, they might set up to try and stifle us, but particularly early on. But if we could get an early goal, that really could open the open the floodgates a little bit. But I'm going to go for a comfortable three nil victory to Bournemouth, three nil, and I'm I'm going to predict that Dembele will score against his former team. Amazing! Can imagine the scenes already. Uh, going to match that. I know it's easy for me to do that, but had that in my mind. Going for a 3 0. Great preview, Matt. Really appreciate it. Going to see you maybe at the 1910 ahead of this game, but um, I hope you enjoy the game. Yeah, you definitely will see me. I had a, I had a weekend off the, the booze um, last weekend. I was with my dad. And I, t- I, to be honest, Kirk, it was, it was brilliant because you actually mm. see the game in a different light you actually take things in that you wouldn't necessarily i always have a drink pre-match but i started to think maybe i should do this more often because i'm actually absorbing i'm taking more in from the game um and it was good but tuesday night i'll be in a 1910 i'll have i'll have a couple certainly so it'll be good to um good to meet up pre-match and, and do that looking forward to it and i am sure that you're going to see a match day vlog for the viewers checking out this match preview so make sure you hit that bell on the channel so you're notified probably Wednesday, hopefully, the Match Day vlog will be out. But get your comments below. Get those score predictions in there. We'll read every single one. If you go into the game, drive safe. If you're checking the game out wherever you can, get behind the cherries as we continue to drive on towards, hopefully, promotion to the Premier League. That's the match preview, though, for this game, Bournemouth versus Peterborough. From me and Matt, until the next video, we will see you soon. Up the cherries. Up the cherries. <laughs>